Phantomaniacs, welcome to the big unboxing for the HasLab Sky Striker. Uh, and I realize that there's kind of no point to this because if you want one of these, like if you see this video and you're like, wow, that's really awesome, I need to get one, you can't just buy it. You're going to have to pay secondary market prices, which is awful. Although they're not as bad as I thought they might be because apparently about 75% of these Sky Strikers that were sold, people bought in order to resell. So if you give it a few months, I think you'll be able to get one of these for not much over the original price. But let's open it up. It arrived today. I'm going to be posting this tomorrow, which to you guys is today. Uh, let's open it up and see. I've been reading about some quality control issues uh, with some of the packaging and even with the Sky Striker itself. I hope that I've gotten a good sample and that mine's in great shape. Uh, I only ordered the one. Looking back, I wish I, well, ideally, I wish I'd gotten three because I would have resold one. Uh, I would have had one to open up and I would have had one to kind of maybe experiment with, put some different stickers on, something along those lines. Uh, but I'm thrilled that I've got the one and we're gonna take a look at it now and find out uh, how things were. It's a little harder to use this thing from this angle. Uh, I will be, speaking of angles, we'll be changing angles up as we go along for this big, oh, we've got, we've got an outer carton and an inner carton. So let's flip that over and hope that the box comes out one of these days. Uh, put, <laughs> Please open form side. What is that all about? I'm not even sure what they're trying to convey with that. Please open form side. Please open from side makes me think like that, but the side doesn't open. I don't know. We're just going to open this thing up. Hopefully this uh, weird misprinting is the most egregious error present on mine. So the Sky Striker, you know, obviously it's an iconic G.I. Joe vehicle, but I gotta say that it wouldn't even have been in my top five, I don't think, for Haslabs. Look at those handles. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's just open. Whoa. Okay. This is interesting. So we've got handles. Very handy. Whoa. That is the box, which is very much like the original retail box. I'm going to set that to the side for now. We have got one. These are the Cobra labels. Two. These are, I think, a little more realistic style of labels. And three, the Toyetic Original Sky Striker labels. And then we've also got a couple of red, white, and blue uh, for the wings. Got our legal document that Hasbro likes to include in everything. Uh, and then we've got tons of instructions that I'm sure we'll get to. Uh, all right, so this is plain white cardboard, plain white cardboard, and then, wow, oh man, look at these figures. Okay, so this is kind of wild. The stand and the vehicles are in this interestingly decorated box. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And the figures are in another... Well, I'll just dump those on the floor. It's a good way to take care of your incredibly valuable O-ring collectible figures. Hooray for not knocking the camera over. All right. I'm going to start with the figures because this is where things, for me personally, get a little questionable. Uh, I'm delighted that there are new O-ring figures. 
However, I don't know how much I need some of these figures. We'll take a closer look at them, uh, but I'll just run through them real quick right now. Uh, we've got the Radar, Radar Intercept Officer Failsafe, a Cobra Trooper, Scarlet in a Flight Suit, Ace, Cobra Commander, uh, the Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander, as it were, Night Force Ripcord, and a Cobra Ground Crew fellow that, oh my gosh, blister just coming off the card. That's uh, it's pretty rough, Hasbro. Uh, I'm, I'm going to file that under not really acceptable. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven figures included with this. I'm going to set these labels aside here. And we'll take a look at the box itself. Gorgeous, classic box art. Uh, and you've got the great red, black, and white line work on the rest of the box. Uh, this just feels wonderful in hand. Uh, to have nice, thick cardboard on it. This is not the, the cheap, thin retail stuff they've been using lately. Um, box looks absolutely fantastic. We'll take a closer look at everything uh, once we've got kind of the initial unboxing out of the way. Uh, one weird thing I'm noticing about the box art, though, is the Sky Striker is just crisp and clean and beautiful. All the lines and the art and the deco and everything just couldn't be any more crisp and clear. But then up here, for some reason, our guys in the cockpit are all weird and blurry looking. I don't know what I don't know what the deal is with that. Like it's almost like this is HD and this is like old low res. I very very odd look to me. And especially with right underneath the cockpit, uh the names are printed with such clarity. Uh that's weird. Not great. Uh all right, we've got the features on the top. Like I said, we'll take a closer look at this box in a minute. Uh, and then we've got our stand and our support vehicles. Not quite sure. I know that Hasbro posted an unboxing video that kind of shows you how to take everything out. I didn't want to watch that because I wanted to experience all of this stuff myself and give you guys the energy of like, oh wow, look at everything that we've got here. That's much more exciting to me than, you know, having already watched Hasbro do it. Uh, it's just not as much fun as if I'm sitting here experiencing everything myself. Uh, but I will watch that video at some point. Uh, so this is all just sort of some random parts. Uh, I think maybe some rockets and stuff are in here. We'll, we'll get a little better camera close up and, and really take a close look at these things. And the box that they're in, which is clearly a runway. Uh, which is a nice touch. Uh, so here, there we go. I don't know how much closer in I can get the camera, so I'm going to go ahead and open the Sky Striker up, and we'll take a look at that. And again, we'll zoom in once it's all out and assembled or whatever. Uh, that box art's really bothering me more than it should. And here it is. It is no longer meant in box. The box is opened, and the tray is being removed. Oh man, this thing is gorgeous. All right, I'm just gonna drop that right on the floor down there. I like that they have all these sort of spacer pieces to keep everything in place where it's supposed to be. Uh, that's good packaging design right there, especially for something, you know, this high dollar. Alright. I'm just going to cut right through these ropes. I don't want to mess around with untying things. We don't have all the time in the world here. So this is just this part 
of the jet. Hope that landing gear stays up a little better. Okay, that's our wing action. And then our landing gear. I'll probably need to look at the instructions because I don't remember exactly how that mechanism worked. Oh, look at the tow hook back there. Very nice. Or not the tow hook, but the uh, whatever this is where it catches. Oh, man, that's the mechanism. Look at this. Very nice. So much. And it does closes up firmly and securely. It's, that looks good. Like I said, we'll get, a, we'll get closer up on the vehicle in just a minute. Uh, and then also in here, we've got our turbines, engines, whatever they are. Uh, that will slide into place in the back of the jet. So, as of right now... This is, we'll go ahead and lay everything out and then we'll get into the nitty gritty as it were. I'm going to include these runway printed boxes because I feel like they're an important part of the whole thing. This is just another spacer piece. So, did I miss the wings? Oh wait, those are the wings. So there you go. Right now, this is what we've got. Uh, so I'm gonna do a little cut, get everything else unwrapped, and we'll take a look at it and put everything together. All right, we've got a nice bird's eye view here going on. Uh, I've taken a look at the instructions. The two different sheets are assembly and stickers. And then a nice blueprint, classic looking blueprint sheet. I appreciate that. So I'm going to set these right over to the side and we are going to put this thing together. I think we're going to need to get the wings out, ready to go to get those installed. Uh, this feels great. Oh, you know what? I meant to... Can you hand me the tape measure, please? Or the measuring tape, as it were. So, measuring tape. Length. This is 23 inches long. And we'll, once we get the wings on there, we'll take a look at that. The, you'll notice the runway Gosh, uh, the runway here are the two boxes that were included with this, and they were kind of a pain to get taken apart. I wish they didn't have tape on them. It didn't seem necessary, uh, but they do make for a nice little diorama type scenario going on there. Oh my gosh, are these really going to be this much of a pain to get in? I can't even get, if you can see... Uh, slots and tabs. I can't seem to get them lined up to go into place very easily. I was not expecting this to be a challenge at all, to tell you the truth. Ooh, that's a terrible noise. Dude, what is going on with this? I'm like second guessing myself, wondering if I'm putting them in the wrong way. I am not. Oh gosh, that's a horrible noise. What is happening? Okay, let's try the other one. I definitely expected this assembly to be a little easier uh, than this. And the wings don't want to stay out. Can I hold that tab? 
while I put the wing on. My gosh, this is annoying. I would rather not break this here. Maybe we'll just we'll just leave it like that. That'll be fine, right? That looks right. Oh my gosh, what? Dude, this is insane. All right, we'll put the landing gear down so we're not putting any undue pressure on that. All right, we're gonna take a little break and come back to this. Oh my gosh. That's one of the most annoying toy assemblies I have ever experienced in my life. And it made the worst noises you've ever heard. Uh, basically what you have to do is take this thing, set it in your lap, get a good grip on it, and just up and down, side to side, wiggle the wing into place as it screeches horrendously. Uh, and then once you've got one in, you've got kind of a better grip to keep them out while you put the other one on. Uh, you can see everything's locked in and lined up, and just what a horrendous pain that was. Wow. Uh, okay, now we have got our engine components. And once I get everything assembled, I'll give a really nice close-up uh, of the entire piece. But for right now, I just want to get everything together. There is actually a notch at the top right here that lines up so you put these in a specific way. Man, that doesn't want to go in. This is, this is not the easy assembly that I kind of thought it would be. Like, I thought everything would just slide home and be super fun and easy. And that is not the case. What, what is even in here blocking this up? Where's my other engine? Let's try this one. See if maybe it'll slide home a little more easily. It's like they don't want to go in the way that they're oriented to go in. And once you slide them in, you can't turn them. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Oh. You gotta be kidding me. There are burrs here and here that I'm going to have to literally cut away in order to get the engines in place. Uh, I don't know if it's glue or if it's actually like plastic burrs. No, it's glue. Cameraman, can you get up there and tell me if, if you can see what I'm pointing out right now? Right here. This glue. No. Am I getting closer in the right way? Yeah. So, I'm going to have to literally get in there with an X-Acto and cut that out in order to get these engines in, which is completely unacceptable, obviously. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, the plastic fuel is really nice. I think I mentioned that. We've got, oh gosh, i got to stop messing around with that landing gear out. Uh, oh, great detail here. We'll take a closer look at all this stuff when I've got the camera in hand and everything is assembled, which apparently is going to be like six hours from now with everything that is going to have to be done. Uh, all right. Uh, we've got our side fins here. I 
Okay, those snapped into place eventually. Assembly on this is not as smooth as I expected. I will definitely say that. Man, nothing on this seems to want to just slide home. And I don't want to apply too much force because we all know what happens when you push plastic too hard. There we go. That sounded terrible. But now we have our nice profile of the Sky Striker. And I gotta say these wings are a little flimsier than I, I was hoping they would be. Uh, the underside is that uh, of the these and the wings is that hollowed out plastic look. Uh, we've got all these visible screws going on here that I'm not a huge fan of. I, I gotta I, I gotta be honest here because that's what I'm here to do and you guys know I, I tend to be very forgiving but this just looks a little cheaper than I expected it to. Uh, the, this particularly is, is kind of bothering me. Very interested to see how all of the missiles and everything are going to attach in right here. Uh, all right, well, let's move along. So, and if anything, here, here is why I'm being a little picky about all of this visible construction parts. Uh, this is an airplane. And I have, as a G.I. Joe collector, all of my airplanes hung from the ceiling. So, this is the part of the toy that I am looking at the way that I display my stuff. And even once you put this on the stand... Uh, you, this is all going to be visible, and quite frankly, I think it's ugly. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, like I said, i got to be honest about this. Uh, we've got two different sets of tail fins. Uh, we've got gray to match the rest of the Sky Striker. And I'm not sure which ones I'm going to put on. Uh, and then we've got black that matches the box art. I think I like the black a little bit more. Uh, but I'm going to have to look at my other Sky Strikers and see how I have them, because I want this one to be different. All right. I'm trying to decide if I want to pause again and scrape that glue out, uh, or if I'm just going to wait for later for that. Uh, let's. Go, I'm going to go ahead and put these white. Cameraman, can you tell me that Sky Striker hanging from the ceiling over there, does it have black fins or white fins? Black fins. Okay, I'm going to put the white tail fins on this one then. And I don't know how easy these are going to be to get in and, and switch out because everything else has been such a chore. But I'm putting them in. Here we go. Alright, those seem to snap into place a little bit more easily uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll come out a little bit more easily as well. Uh, nice little piece of engineering here on this doodad. Now we've got... This is fantastic because now you have separate mechanisms for the wings and for the landing gear, uh, which is something that always bothered me about the original Sky Striker. So, very happy to see that. Uh, I like that the capture capture hook is that what this thing is called maybe uh for landing on the flag it's articulated there it's got a nice little bit of movement uh, i like that a good bit of the stuff is tampoed on here it's not all stickers i appreciate that because as much as i like applying stickers when i'm spending this much money on an item I want all of the decor on it to be straight, like, and not my clumsily applied with my giant fingers, uh, wacky stuff. 
So let's open up the cockpit here and see how well the seats fit in. Uh, you've got a couple of holes. Makes it easy enough to get the seats in place where they're supposed to go. So that's great. That's the first easy thing about this whole HasLab is the, at least the seats plug right into place. Uh, we'll get a closer look at the cockpit when I'm in the hand in uh, handheld. That closes right back up, and we've got an additional canopy. And if you notice, uh, the canopy is great. The tinted plastic is very nice, translucent, looks awesome, uh, and then the painted uh, support pieces look really good. But you've got an extra canopy so you can put different uh, decorations on that, uh, different labels, depending on how you want to do it. Underneath, you've got options for a chin gun, which this is like, whoop, this is like rubber. Very weird. But I'm guessing that's so it fits, huh. Oh, there we go. So it plugs right in there, and it's got, it looks like it's got a, this is a camera, like a observational gear. And this is an addition, something that wasn't on the original Sky Striker. Pretty neat, but the fact that it's rubber is just cheap. I don't love that. And it does not match you know, the gloss of the rest of the Sky Striker. Which I gotta say, speaking of gloss, so you can see uh, the wings, the body, all the primary portions have a really nice gloss to them, but the fins do not match. Uh, the fins don't have a matching gloss. They're not as shiny as the rest of the Sky Striker. And look, I'm, I realize I'm getting pretty nitpicky at this point, but it, this thing has thrown a couple of frustrations at me uh, between assembling the wings and and, and the visible stuff here. So I, it, it's, you know, once you start picking at something, it's very easy to just keep going until it falls apart. Got a nice panel. We'll take a look at these removable panels uh, again once I go into handheld. We've got all of our missiles and rockets and whatnot. We've got our fuel tank uh, that plugs in, that, that in theory plugs in down here. A uh, fuel tank that uh, really kind of doubles as a handle. All right, what am I doing wrong? Oh my gosh, okay. There we go. Uh, so now you ostensibly have a handle with which to fly your Sky Striker around while going All right. Uh, let's pull out the instructions here and see what else we've got. Uh, shows you how the ejection sheet uh, ejection seats work. Weapon rail. Oh, okay. So we have some different options here for the loadouts. Uh, these are the slots where those can plug in. Oh, man. Cameraman, can you hand that back to me, please? Thank you, sir. Well, this is not helpful at all. Insert chin pod. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Uh, weapons rail and slide forward to lock into place. I thought that's what I was doing. Maybe I was wrong. All right, well... Clearly there are some things here that I'm going to have to get back to. Uh, 
don't know if it's just me having these issues or what oh man that just doesn't want to plug in there there we go it's just a very very tight fit and as far as sliding forward i don't know how much sliding forward is going to happen on this thing let me get that back out of there and we'll uh, take we'll revisit that when we come back uh all right so for the time being this is our sky striker uh, assembled as assembled as it's going to get right now. I'm going to take a little pause here. We're going to get a little work done and revisit. All right. I have come into the workshop to wrap this thing up because it's more comfortable and because what I really thought was going to be a joyous event has turned out to be kind of a disappointing, frustrating experience. And you know, I hate to go negative, but but my gosh, this thing has some problems and it, it, uh, does not live up to the standard set by the Star Wars Vintage Collection has labs, in my opinion. Uh, the sail barge and the razor crest are some of the best toys I've ever owned. They are up there as holy grails of toy collecting. Uh, this, I expected to be that, but it, it just isn't that standard of, my gosh, I can't believe I own this. The craftsmanship is incredible. Uh, the look, the consistency, I don't feel that way about this. I like it. It's cool, but it is not anywhere near the level of quality of those releases. And if I didn't have those, maybe I would feel differently. Now, I probably wouldn't because the the fact that I had to go in here and scrape glue out of the, well, and look at Okay, so I had to go in and scrape I'm not even going to I'm never never ever going to remove these. Because even once I scraped the glue out that was keeping them from seating properly, uh, they were massively difficult to get into place. Uh, I will never take these out. Uh, and there are... I want to get into some more of the details here. Let's open up the cockpit. This front portion is removable. Uh, you've got the yoke, right? You get a nice little instrument panel there that is all painted. That's great. Uh, I appreciate the amount of stuff on this that is paint, uh, making the stickers kind of superfluous. Uh, because again, with this quality or what was supposed to be this level of quality uh, and top tier toy, uh, I don't want stickers on something like this. And I said the same thing about the HasLab Hiss Tank. Um, you know, I don't want any stickers on that. So it looks like there's a panel right here, but I'm not positive. Did I bring the instructions in here? No, I sure didn't. Ugh. So I'm almost positive this panel is supposed to be removable. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's just that little tiny segment right there. Uh, neat touch. I like it. Stuff like that. And that is in line with the, the HasLab stuff. Uh, little little extras like that. See, it looks like this might be removable as well. Uh, and then you've got your, where it actually says panel removal. Oh my gosh. I got this one off earlier. There we go. You just kind of have to push to the side. Uh, so you can see the really nice detail in there. Now, I will say this. Uh, not a whole lot of paint in there. But looks cool. Nice feature. I like it. When I was a kid, I would have stored weapons in here for sure. I always loved those kind of little bonus type features on the vehicles. Little removable panels like that were always a lot of fun. Uh, underneath, I've got the loadout on there now. Uh, you've got a lot of different options. You've actually got, let's see. 
those two, and then I've got, we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, the rest of the rockets are on here. Missiles, whatever. I'm, I'm annoyed, you guys. I, <laughs> I know, I know I'm Mr. Hasbro Shill Boy, but, uh, I'm pretty annoyed right now. Uh, let's see, what else have we got going on? Let's uh, take a look at the landing gear operating from underneath. Uh, you pull back on that capture hook. Oh, look at uh, the these flaps. Look like there are, well, they are articulated. I can't seem to get them open, uh, which kind of goes along with everything else on this project that just everything is just more frustrating to utilize than it should be. Uh, but anyway, you can see that both of those are articulated. I just can't get this one to move, whatever. There we go. Landing gear works very nicely. I love, uh, these are actual, I think they're rubber, uh, but whatever the case, they roll nicely. Well, let's turn it over and give it a little, oh, whoop. Yeah, rolls nice. <laughs> okay. Well, there's another. Uh, it it does roll, but, oh, you know what? That's the problem. Look, the wheel is not quite low enough relative to the panel. So when you roll it, it just pushes that shut. You see what I'm saying? That panel sticks out a little bit too far and catches on the ground when you try and roll it. So the plane just slumps forward in defeat. Kind of like I'm going to be doing as soon as I'm finished with this review. I know that's too harsh. It is a neat toy, but it is not, again, a, a phenomenal HasLab uh, as we're accustomed to. Uh, all right, what else have we got here? I think we've kind of covered, uh, if you look in the front here, you can see the front turbines. Nice silver color, look really good. And, and I'll be clear, if this was like a $100 toy, I'd be stoked about it right now. Like, this would be awesome. Uh, all right, so I think we've kind of covered everything. Got one more point of articulation back here. Works nicely. Uh, and then, of course, I think I've done it a few times now, but one more time can't hurt. It is very satisfying to activate those wings. And they do stay out solidly unless you're trying to connect them. Uh, I don't love that we've got this seam right here. You know, now... Now that this thing has frustrated me, uh, my, my nitpicky glasses are on, for this price, this seam should not be here. This should have come, this should have all been one piece, uh, and it should have come in the box like this. Why not? Why, why wouldn't it? Make the box bigger. I don't care. I paid $250, whatever it was for this, uh... So th this is probably my biggest point of dissatisfaction, aside from the quality problems. Uh, the seam, and then just how unattractive uh, this looks. And, and honestly, if, if they had done what I'm saying right now, and made this wing all one piece, we wouldn't have all of this ugliness. Sorry, I've got my uh, clip in the way. We wouldn't have all this ugliness right here. And we potentially could have had, again, this is this is that sort of cheap, hollow-looking uh, plastic right here that, that is, this is a retail toy. I'm sorry, but it is. That's what retail toys look like. That's not what Haslabs look like. All right. I'm sorry, Sky Striker. I don't mean to hurt your feelings. You're just not everything I feel you were supposed to be. I If... If Hasbro called me right now and was like, ha ha, surprise, we got you. That's actually a hundred dollar toy. Here's 150 bucks back. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all. We, we just put a retail release in a, in a HasLab box. Ha ha. Just having a little fun. Uh, okay. So there is the Sky Striker. I'm going to set it 
uh, off to the side. Okay, I totally forgot to put the blast effects on this thing. So we're not we're not yet done with the Sky Striker itself, which by the way, I just walked out of the room and held it up next to my uh I guess 50th anniversary and 25th anniversary Sky Strikers and I, I would love to compare them on camera for you, but those are just not camera ready at the moment. This is in my opinion, this is not significantly different enough to justify the the purchase and the price. Just my opinion. Uh, now, once you add everything in, all of the figures, the blast effects, all that kind of stuff, then sure, that's a different story. But for the Sky Striker itself, not so much. All right. And look, the blast effects are awesome. Like, that is really cool. I love that. Uh, I am probably going to display my Sky Striker with a bunch of the blast effects uh, on there. I think that's great, but we've got, this really just feels like if, if this had been a retail release, I would have definitely noticed the mechanisms being separated for the landing gear and the wings. Other than that, there's nothing I would have looked at on here and thought, wow, they really went all out on this. This is wild. Uh, so let's take a look at, we'll just plug some of these blast effects into the rocket so you guys can see looks great looks awesome i'm i'm look that is a hundred percent a success and a great upgrade i i love these these blast effects were a great touch uh let's take a look at the actual engine effects now it looks like this has a very specific shape Oh, that goes right in. Thank you for that that one uh that one thing that works really nicely. Look at that. Those plugged right in. They look great. That's fantastic. The translucence, uh here I'll get those out so we can take a closer look at them. Though oh man, I'm so happy those actually just work like they're supposed to. Uh, so great translucent orange, nice sculpt, really effective, uh, sort of flame look. Very happy with those. Interesting that the ends are sealed. Uh, but yeah, that's great. Those are excellent. And then we've got some just smaller effects for the smaller missiles. I really like the deco on these. It looks great. They did a... This does feel deluxe. Interesting that we've got the two different kind of looks, though. The white smoke and the gray smoke. Uh, but all of them fit into everything. So however you want to display them works. Uh, on these... Everything, uh, these are all tampos, they're not stickers, and they're all facing the same direction, which is probably, like, when I was a kid, I would have put this one on this side and this one on this side, but that's probably not how they would really be. So it annoys me, but at the same time, I think this is more accurate than how Kid Dave would have placed stickers on these, so that's fine. Uh, fuel tank is in there pretty snug, and I was annoyed putting it on but now I'm kind of like well I'm glad it goes in there really tight because it is it does function uh as something of a handle when you're zooming this around your room uh and and you know don't get me wrong this is this is to me I don't know why I keep saying to me and in my opinion obviously this is all my opinion uh this is a satisfactory toy it is not a satisfactory has lab how about that that seems a little more fair all right, let me try and find somewhere to set that to the side where it's not going to fall over and uh, break my heart more than it already has. All right. And I do want to be clear. I love O-Ring. I want O-Ring to continue. I want more O-Ring products. I want more Transformers crossovers. I want more regular O-Ring vehicles like the Stinger. Bring it all on. This has not soured me 
on an O-Ring revival or on G.I. Joe one bit. I love G.I. Joe, and I'm going to continue buying everything Hasbro wants to make. Uh, I just, again, with that HasLab name on it, I expect a lot more. Uh, speaking of expecting a lot more, this thing is just the cheapest plastic it possibly could be. This feels like one of the, like, Walmart... I look at this. This is just a peg going through the wheel. This this is a cheap piece of junk. Uh, I do appreciate, though, the... If I can figure out which way it goes. So I'm going to have to pull this while I turn the little wheel. That mechanism does not work as smoothly as I would like it to. So don't just pull on that hose. You know, you'd think it would have a way to sort of unlock and let it just roll out. Uh, toys have done that, but it doesn't. So you have to sit here and do this. Okay. So there it is. You can see how it's connected in there. It looks like that's actually a circular piece. So the tube isn't going to pull off. There is actually... Well, you can see right there. It's actually kind of an O-ring. Uh, so that is connected securely. So don't worry too much about yanking that thing off of there. Uh, but there is your refueling truck. Uh, no deco whatsoever. And just the cheapest... Uh, Walmart toy plastic available. No, no deco here. Just nothing. This, this is, I, these pegs going through the wheels are just the cheapest way they possibly could have done this. Uh, you know, it's neat to have it, but what a, what a underwhelming piece of junk this is. Uh, and then we've got our weapons cart. Uh, that does, it is neat the way that these interact. Uh, you get the peg under there. And they roll, you know, pretty nicely. This, to me, doesn't even hold up to the standard of 1980s Joe stuff. Because these would have had a few extra parts or a little bit of color or something on them. Like, this would have been... Well, this is two separate pieces. Uh, you know, there would have been more than one color to these things. Uh, so that kind of folds up there. You've got... You can take the weapons rack off and put this engine cover panel on instead and then this i guess becomes a little motorized thing that pulls the uh fuel cart i guess so i guess this is the front portion so you can just have it doing that but i mean i don't know why you would do that and not have the weapons rack on it but this you know again this is the same just cheap plastic uh no deco, bare bones looking. Uh, it is what it is. Oh, the it is cool. The ladder. Oh, I didn't have the ladder interact with the Sky Striker. Uh, let's see. Well, the ladder hangs on the side there, which is pretty neat. I'm glad there's a storage spot for that. We'll bring the Sky Striker back in a second. Well, we'll bring it back anyway because we're going to have to put it on the base. Which is hollow inside, so you get a little bit of storage. You can stick some stuff in there, I guess. Uh, and then it's got this really great ball joint. Well, hang on, I just knocked the whole thing loose. Okay. Uh, it's got a nice ball joint, so you can pose the Sky Striker, and then this collar to lock it in place once you find the pose that you want, which is really nice. So, that looks cool. Uh, very happy with this piece. We'll see how secure the Sky Striker is on it. So, let me go back. I should have just done this whole thing standing up. That's my mistake, is I keep trying to get up out of the chair... But I wanted to be comfortable for this. All right, so you can see uh, all of your grooved, notched things go into place. All 
All right, well, that might be as well as it's going to go at the moment. Uh, and you can figure out where you want the Sky Striker. And then just tighten that collar up and it will hold it in place nicely. So that works really well. And the base is solid and thick and you don't have to worry. I've got some uh, Star Trek ships where the base is not quite wide enough at the bottom. So if you move them the wrong way, they'll kind of fall over. It's not the best. All right, now let's take a look at our ladder. And... Where does this go? Oh, wait, is that where... No? All right, it's instruction time again. This review has gone on so much longer than I anticipated, and I appreciate you guys bearing with me. Uh, as I've experienced the experience of the Sky Striker. Oh, so it doesn't say anything about the ladder. Really? I know in one of the older Hasbro Pulse videos, I believe Lenny placed the ladder on there and showed how it worked, and I was thinking there was a little uh, something over here where it actually clipped, I mean, uh, clearly it looks like it clips into place somewhere. Does it go in from the other side? No, oh, wait. There's a little panel right there. Let's get this turned around so you guys can see what I'm doing. Oh, that's the refueling port. So you get your little nondescript paint-free fuel truck. Fuel that bad boy up right there. That plugs into place really nicely. That's very satisfying. I like that. Because uh, you kind of had to, you know, older toy lines, you kind of had to fake that out. Like you never really got a cool refueling uh, that, that plugged in. Because that one did. It plugged in and it stayed in. Maybe that is wide enough. All right, let's try and get this panel off again. There we go. And this, oh, okay, this clips on, you can see these uh, bars right here. This just clips into place on those little rounded bars. I guess you can put them on whichever side, but uh, it's pretty secure. Uh, if, you're, if you're displaying it, you'll be good. All right, and I will say this, this thing seems pretty sturdy uh, to, to go back to it being a, a toy, and I'm pretty happy with it as far as it being a toy goes. Uh, it is, it's pretty sturdy, it feels good. Um, I don't feel like anything is in danger of just falling apart or breaking. As a matter of fact, the, the difficulty that I had putting some portions of it together uh, show. I just want to see how well the ladder lines up with the ground. Oh, perfectly. Well, not to, but I mean, it's right there. It works. It's not like my concern was that this was going to work about like the landing gear. And when I put the ladder in, it was going to like lift the plane up or something, but it does. It, it fits wonderfully there. Very well done. Uh, it's a good toy. Okay. It is a good toy. All right, what else have we got? I think that's everything, so let's now take a look at the figures. Okay. Radar Intercept Officer, codename Failsafe. Uh, the card back is nice and sturdy. Uh, I like the helmet and the pistol stored up here in the blister. And he looks... Well, you know what? Let's just take him out of there. Ooh, now look at this. First of all, I like the cross cell up here of all seven figures included. Single language on the file card. That is fantastic. 
I halfway want to just keep these carded. You know what? I don't know if I'm going to open these or not. I know that's really weird for me. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I got, I got it. Why would I not? That's what I do. And no, I'm not going to take an exacto and cut the bubble off. Uh, I'll save the card for sure, but you know, that's not how I roll. There we go. Okay, nice. That's one connected piece. Our pistol, our helmet, and our guy out of there. And figure out what to do with that later on. And he has the same feel as the modern O-rings. And look at that face. Got a pretty... You know, it's funny. In a way, he looks serious, but in a way, he looks kind of, like, amused. But it is a unique, different head sculpt. He's got a little schmutz on his cheek right there. Come on. Really? We're going to focus on the helmet and the pistol? Come on, camera. Or are we focusing on these cards? Let's get these out of the way. I thought I'd be able to... Just leave them off camera, but I guess they're not off camera. Uh, okay, so unique new head sculpt looks very G.I. Joe to me. I like it. Uh, the amount of detail I feel like is appropriate on him because as much as I did want the Sky Striker to be a deluxe item, uh, it did, you know, every all of this does need to stay within the standards of 80s Joes. Like, new materials are fine. Well, new materials are great, because now we don't have to worry about, you know, broken thumbs, broken crotches. Uh, but aesthetically, they need to look like 80s Joes, and this guy, to me, looks like an 80s Joe. Very nice job. I like him. Uh, the helmet with the goggles. The goggles being painted are almost too much. But looks good, so it's fine. Uh, I've got a little... Man, come on, focus. i got a little black paint here on the front. Not great. Don't love that. Uh, and then his pistol is pretty basic. A little automatic pistol looks good. And that is going to fit right in his hand there. And he kind of holds it old school G.I. Joe, like angled in just a little bit. Uh, so cool, like him. Let's keep going with the Cobra Trooper, who I suppose I should do a comparison uh, to the released Cobra Trooper. So I've just realized these do not come with battle stands. So, boo to that. That's disappointing. Uh, so, here is... Oh, he's di oh he's definitely different. i got to open this guy up. Absolutely. Uh, different in more than he just... More than that he just doesn't have a battle stand. Curious to see if their blues match, since these are technically different releases, like from different lines. Yes, the blues match. Well done. Uh, you can see the belt buckle, the knee pads, just more detailing on our Sky Striker guy. More paint. Uh, I like that he does not have his blue onesie hands. Nice touch there. Uh, but otherwise, the same figure, just a little more paint on this fella. Comes, of course, with that traditional rifle. Looks great. And we'll put that right in his hand. Fits well. Looks good. I am happy to have another Cobra Trooper. Another flavor of Cobra Trooper. Now we've got Pilot Scarlet. Card looks great. Um, no, it doesn't. You can see there's some kind of white discoloration uh, all over the card here. Almost looks a little bit like water damage. 
Uh, not great. Don't love it. But I'm going to open it, so what are you going to do? Pop those accessories light right out. And I am so excited because I love any action figure with a bubble helmet. Bubble helmets are the best. Even better than berets. That's right. You can tell Noel I said that. Let's get that back in there. Uh, so this is, of course, just Ace's body with Scarlet's head. Uh, we do know that, you know, here we here we have a Scarlet head. So hopefully we're going to get an O-ring Scarlet in the line. Uh, I like the blue coloration on the flight suit. Looks really good and is kind of a callback uh, to that old blue, what, Quarrel? Was that the blue Scarlet that I'm thinking of? Like an international figure? Uh, her hair could be a little more red, I think, but still dig it. Sculpt looks good. The helmet, will the helmet fit? Oh, the helmet fits beautifully. Great translucent faceplate. I mean, that is crystal clear. Looks awesome. Uh, it's a little odd that somebody in a flight suit would have a crossbow especially a crossbow with no handle. This must be what the gentleman was referring to in the live stream last night. There is no handle. There is no grip on this crossbow. What are we doing here, Hasbro? And I mean, don't get me, you know, this is going in a drawer anyway, but my gosh... What is happening? All right. Well, the figure is wonderful. I dig just Scarlet in a flight suit. It's cool. All right. Now we've got Ace in a flight suit. Uh, his card is relatively, is, is undamaged. Uh, looks good. Blister is on securely. And he, I like that he comes with a pistol. I think that's a nice touch. And, and maybe I'll store these weapons in those uh, little engine cover plates that are on there like I would have when I was a kid. That might be exactly what I do with those. Oh, you know what I should do? You know what I need to do is compare this guy. Oh, gosh, look at the gap in his elbow right there. That's kind of ugly. I don't like that. Look at that. I mean, it almost looks like the rivet is almost broken. With how... Ooh, that's a little rough. All right, we got to go get Ace. Look at that. Wow. I mean, look at just how close these are side by side. Let me take off the helmet. We can get a look at that portrait. Uh, the original Ace, this one is a little more expressive, I think. But the new one still looks good. Color-wise, um, just different choices as far as the gray on his uh, trunks, I guess. A little lighter there. It's fine. And as with all these newer O-rings, uh, the sculpt is just a little bit deeper on the originals. But overall, if I didn't have them, you know, to put side by side right next to each other like this, you know, I, I wouldn't really notice the differences very much at all. So let's set our original ace to the side and take a closer look at our new guy. In a way, he's a little cleaner, and I don't mean literally physically. There's just something more to get. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Let's pop that helmet on. Same way. Easiest way to put these helmets on, if you can see, there's a little kind of clip-type piece. Put it in the front first and then push the back down. Beautiful, clear faceplate, just like Scarlet. Looks awesome. 
And then he has, uh, looks like the same pistol. Yes, that is the same pistol that the co-pilot came with. And by the way, I think I'm going to have Ace and Scarlet in the cockpit. I don't know what I'm going to do with co-pilot guy. He's great, but I just like the, I like the way that these two complement each other. It's cool. All right. Uh, Cobra Commander, Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander. Not opening this one. Uh, this is probably going to go up on eBay, especially considering the blister is secure. The card is undamaged. Uh, and a couple little barely divots here, but overall this is in great shape. Uh, so yeah, I believe I'm going to throw this guy up on eBay because he's just not, uh, significant to me. Well, before we get to the most exciting figure, in my opinion, uh, this guy, I believe, oh, but this is the one, look at that. The bubble is like almost completely separated. But this guy also not really any significance to me. I don't really... Ha I would have loved to have Ketchup and Mustard, the G.I. Joe ground crew. Uh, Ramp Rat, which is a good name. I don't really care about this guy. He may go up on eBay as well. So that brings us to Night Force Ripcord, who I think looks awesome. I absolutely love that they went with the digital background on his packaging, uh, so it's era appropriate. I I want more O-ring Joes very very badly. I want Hasbro to continue releasing things like this. Uh, I think he is fantastic. But now that I'm sitting here looking at him. I'm wondering, do I, because I have the original ripcord, do I want a Night Force ripcord or do I want some money? I'll take a close look. He's got a great sculpt. He looks awesome. Uh, you've got all his gear is in there. Uh, rifle looks great. Uh, this is awesome. But I don't know that I want to open this and keep it. Hmm. Yeah, he is going to be set to the side with the other ones for right now. My mind is not made up. Uh, so there we go. There are figures. Well, let's, let's try and get everything back in the picture here. I'm going to do a little stand-up for the rest of this video. All right, so let's try and get everything in here as well as as well as we can. Uh, very happy with the four figures, except for Ace's right elbow. There is definitely not the best. Uh, we've got our kind of whack support vehicles, our stand. And all kinds of extras, all the blast effects. I didn't even look because I've spent way too much time on this. My gosh. Oh, I do like the canopy clicks into place. That's a really nice touch. Uh, it clicks into place and stays open. Uh, so you're, I didn't even get into the parachutes. I suppose I should test these uh, to see how well they work. Uh, so we've got a blast effect with a little key shape in there. Looks great. And then that, in turn, can plug into the Sky Striker. So it is literally blasting out of the plane. Well, you know, I say it can plug into it. And I have... There we go. Okay. So that's kind of fun. And then our parachute. This is probably a mistake. Because who knows if I'll ever be able to roll this up well enough to get it back in there. But 
it is one of the nicer details. Got that beautiful Sky Striker parachute. Nice fabric. Uh, it's not plastic. This is actual fabric. Beautiful graphic on it. Looks great. And then this little tab right here. You can just put right in the top of the chair. And that clips shut. It's very nice and secure. And we're going to have to do a little test here. I'm going to close the video off with oh he pegs right into place nice and secure that's great so obviously the figure isn't going to sit with his knees like that i'm going to move his take his pistol and set it to the side i didn't even test the fit of the figures or anything i'm sorry you guys this has not been one of my finer reviews i'm not gonna lie uh so there he fits right in there uh, with a little more effort, I could probably get his hand on the yoke and, and everything would be great. Uh, so this is an awesome toy. It is not, in my opinion, a spectacularly executed Haslab. The parachute's great. The blast effects are great. The stand is great. Uh, these vehicles are, are weak. It's cool to have them, but they're they're somewhat cheaply executed. Uh, the figures are mostly great. Overall, if I had paid even 150 bucks, I, but you know what? It's hard to say because look, the, these figures are what twenty? How much were they last time? Twenty one dollars a piece. Forty was it forty two dollars for two O rings? So $21 a piece, uh, we're already looking at like what, 150 bucks worth of figures, something like that. So if you consider the price we're paying for the figures, we paid about, you know, I, I, I have to say this is tough with the figures, with the extras, the base, the plane, the value is there. I'm not going to lie. It does not feel like a HasLab to me, but to have gotten seven figures, seven O-ring figures, these extras and everything for the package, in the end, I do feel like I got my money's worth. So I hope everybody stuck around to the end of the video to get that prognosis with all of the disappointment I had. And look, I'm not excusing the poor execution of certain elements of this. Uh, that's quality control, though. That's not final product intent, I guess. So if you took away the quality control issues I had... Um, even with the seams in the wings, even with the difficulty of putting everything together, I do feel like I got my money's worth. And at the end of the day, isn't that what you should judge something by? Yeah, I think so, yes. Uh, so there you go. I know that's not really the most satisfactory conclusion I could have come to, considering how disappointed I was for much of this review. But I have to admit, uh, considering today's prices... Uh, what we got, and, and especially once I, you know, once I flip these figures for a reasonable price, of course, I'm going to feel pretty good about this. <laughs> I've come back around, you guys. It's not incredible, but it's pretty darn good. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about needless things and uh, they're the flip flopper of a host. And as always, Yo, Joe! Now let's go check out this parachute action. Alright, Ace, are you ready? This is the highest point in the house and the best place to test out this new G.I. Joe technology, the Sky Striker Parachute. Uh, I'm going to move down a step because if I don't, there's a possibility that we're going to get tangled up in the light up there. So, here we go. Let's, let's see. One... Two, three, 
Look at that! He floated relatively safely to the ground. I'm actually pretty impressed. Uh, so there you go. That was the parachute test. And I gotta say, I think Ace uh, came through with flying colors. Smash that like button if you like needless things. <laughs>